Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Level Automotive. I wanted to make a real quick video about this uh, 2012 Ford F350 Super Duty. It's got the 6.2 liter V8. And customer complaint is that this vehicle uh, would intermittently stall. Uh, this truck is a company vehicle. It's a flatbed. Uh, and so they use it to carry really heavy uh, items on the back of the truck. And uh, the guy's main concern was that whenever the thing whenever the engine would shut off the braking would be would become really hard so uh, it's kind of dangerous when you're carrying a lot of weight and then all of a sudden the engine dies and the brakes get real stiff um, it can be a safety concern uh, but anyway so they brought me the truck and I drove the truck around and I was not able to duplicate the stall condition I've had the truck for like five days and I drove the crap out of it I mean I drove extensively and I never could get it to shut off on me and the only code that it had stored in the system uh, the only cord that the only code that it had stored in the in the computer was this p1450 p1450 says unable to bleed up fuel tank vacuum and so initially I thought you know it's an evap code maybe it's you know generally evap codes don't cause any drivability concerns or any drivability issues it's mainly just for evaporative emissions um, so it, it was kind of in the back of my mind but it wasn't at the forefront uh, so uh, I guess I'll say this is that that's the only code that it had when they brought it to me uh, after the second day of driving it uh, I went on for I went on like a, a 20 30 minute drive something like that uh, the truck started running lean it, it didn't have any drivability issues like it was driving fine but during idle uh it it was running lean the the fuel trims were were pegging out uh and it it stored two other codes you can see this po 171 and this po 174 so system lean on both banks bank one and bank two and so i thought that was funny that you know when they brought me the truck it only had the p1450 evap code and then after driving it it, it started running lean and it came up with this po 171 and 174 uh, what I like to do with those codes is I like to do a, a check uh, to see what happens with the fuel trims at different RPMs. So at idle, I noticed that the, the, the fuel trims were pegged at 25. And when I would raise the RPM and hold it at around 2,500, 3,000 RPM, the fuel trims would get a lot better. So they'd go down to close to zero. Uh, so that led me to believe that there was a vacuum leak somewhere on the motor. And so what I did was I took my smoke machine and we smoked the intake. We smoke tested the intake and I could not find any vacuum leaks with the smoke machine. And in the back of my mind, uh, I also wanted to verify that if there was a possibility that the EVAP purge, the purge solenoid for the EVAP system up on the motor, let me show you where it's located. Let's just get under the hood here. So I've already installed a new one, but I'll get to that in a second. Uh, so when I was smoke testing the intake, I wasn't able to find any vacuum leak. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that this wasn't stuck open. Uh, so while I had the smoke machine on there, I removed this hose. And uh, you know, I, I assumed that if this valve was stuck open, uh, you would see smoke coming out of this out of the port but uh that wasn't the case so i removed the hose and there was no smoke coming out of that uh purge solenoid uh so i didn't think that it was a problem for me so i put it all back together and after i put everything back together i hooked the computer back up and then i noticed all the fuel trims were running normal so with the fuel trims all corrected and, and mind you, I didn't do anything but smoke test the intake. So I was pretty confused at this point. I smoke tested the intake and I didn't, I didn't change anything. You know, I just smoke tested the intake and I, I removed the smoke machine after I couldn't find a vacuum leak. And then I started the vehicle back up uh, to drive it again. And I noticed that the fuel trims were back to normal. So it wasn't running lean anymore. And you know in the back of my mind I was like well what the heck is going on because it was running lean 
uh, before I did the smoke test, but then I did the smoke test. Now it's running fine. And so I, you know, for the next two days, I was driving this thing, you know, trying to get it to run lean on me again, but it, it just wouldn't run lean. Uh, and it never did stall on me. So I was kind of, I was kind of going around in circles with this thing, uh, till I found some information about the, uh, perch solenoid on these. So the perch solenoid is actually a pretty common problem on these motors. Um, I think like 2009 and up on these Fords. Uh, so what happens is that the, the valve gets stuck in the open position and if it's stuck in the fully open position, you have full engine vacuum pulling on the EVAP system. And in case, in some cases, maybe if you have a fuel, a full tank of gas, then, you know, that gas may be able to, may get sucked up into the, uh, into the EVAP system and then sucked up into the intake and, you know, could possibly choke the motor out. Uh, so that's an explanation for why the truck may die on you from having a stuck open purge solenoid. Now, the thing about smoke testing these is kind of difficult because whenever you're smoke testing these, you're putting a positive pressure instead of a vacuum on this. So if the, if the valve is stuck and you're trying to smoke test it and you're pushing positive smoke pressure, like positive pressure, you may end up just pushing the valve back into place and then you'll never see the smoke coming out of this thing. So, uh, I mean, a smoke test may or may not help you identify this as a problem. So I found the best way to test these is actually to just remove it and then wipe off this area right here and just put your mouth on it, you know, put your lips on it and suck on it. And if you feel like air is passing through it, then this valve is not seating correctly. Uh, because on a brand new one or a good working one, if you suck on this uh, piece right here, it's going to be completely shut. So, you know, you could suck on it and then uh, not feel any, you know, not lose any vacuum in your mouth. I know that sounds kind of weird, but that's a really quick and easy way to test this because uh, if you try to smoke test this or, or use any type of positive pressure uh, to see if you're going to get anything coming out of here, you may not be able to see it because uh, you're just going to push the valve shut and it's just going to seal itself. Uh, so anyways, uh, I hope this video helps somebody out because this one really, really did kick my ass. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, now I'm just glad that I can feel confident that, you know, giving this vehicle back to the customer, they're not going to have a problem with it. Uh, so anyways, guys, if you like the video, please like, uh, if you like the channel, please subscribe. If you have any questions, you can always comment down below and thank you for watching.